So what's the most you've ever spent in the club in a night, though? Hush. Mm. <laughs> Give us a figure. See, my managers even say, don't say. <laughs> don't say. <laughs> Yo, guys, welcome back to the Kid Show. As you guys can see, we're on our third episode right now. Got my guy, Costa Ticia. Mr. Big Flexer, yes, Mr. World Tour, <laughs> Mr. One Million for um, a show. And um, <laughs> yeah, bro, how are you, bro? I'm good. How are you, my brother? I'm chilling, bro. Nice to <laughs> finally have you on my channel. Appreciate it, bro. Um, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, I've been yeah. begging him, but I met him at Cotton Fest, obviously. Mm. And um, I initially asked Costa to be on a public interview, but bro, I was just like, nah. <laughs> Tell them why he said no, though. Bro, uh, to be honest with you, man, like, even the mere fact that I'm here right now is really just because, like, I've been, like, following your journey and I support what you do, bro. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like interviews. Uh, I really don't like them for a number of reasons. Um, I feel like a lot of people are searching for clickbait. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are searching for controversy. All those kind of things that are just going to grow their platform that quick 10 seconds, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I get that. And then another thing I also came to realize is just, I feel like, how can I put it? As human beings, we're growing so, so much, right? So I could say something today that I believe today, yeah, right? for sure. And then maybe a month from now, like, I learned something new about what my opinion was on a month ago. A month ago, ago you know? yeah, yeah, I get And I'm now I feel different, you know, and I've evolved as a person. But then someone goes and fetches that thing from like three years ago. And they put it on, and yeah. And they put it out on blast. And now all of a sudden, you're under fire for Cancel like Cancel culture. Something, Cancel culture. You know, so for me, just the interview kind of thing, it's just not for me. And, and generally, bro, really, I'm not really like the type of guy to talk a lot. Yeah. You know? I like to just let the work speak for itself, if that but makes sense. You know? Have you always been like that? Like from like school days? Yeah. From school days. Quiet guy. Quiet. I only talk a lot with people I feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. get a lot of girls on school though? Yeah. A lot. <laughs> I was uh, okay. Well, uh, I was a bit of like I was a bit of a player in school. Ah, yeah. So you're not school. a player anymore. Nah. Then why haven't you, haven't you got a girlfriend? Why haven't you got a girlfriend? <laughs> I want to know that. Is he already come with the <laughs> now questions? Now what do you mean? I'm just asking. <laughs> We're talking about your normal life. Like, I want to know. Why, this is actually why I didn't want to do an interview with you because I know how sharp you are, bro. You're quick <laughs> with the questions, bro. <laughs> Um, Why yo, man, single? like, okay, to be frank about it, when it comes to like the relationship side of life, um, listen to the mic, bro. When it comes to the relationship side of life, yeah, I keep that super private. Uh -huh. Um, I feel like we let so much of the fans into our world on a day to day basis that it's like, what do you keep for yourself? Yes, you know, um, yes. and and I also, I also don't like how now people are in your business, like, you know, now, now. You, your honey is out somewhere or something like that. And now people are snapping and, you know, questioning. Isn't this, isn't this cost at his girlfriend? You know, something yeah. like that. And it could be something so innocent, you know, or just generally, it's just drama, you know? And yeah. I don't like that, like coming into my personal life. When it comes to my personal life, I like to keep that private. I like to feel like a human in my own space. You know, obviously when you go out into the limelight, you have to conduct yourself in a certain way. You have yeah. to behave, bro, because, you know, people will come for you if you don't. But, yeah, man, uh, reason why I don't have a girlfriend right now is, hey, man, it, this lifestyle is hectic, bro. Uh -huh. I don't think it's designed for a relationship, bro. Like, I've been on tour the entire year, you know? Yeah, speaking about tour, bro, obviously, um, Mr. Big Flexer went viral. Mm -hmm. 35 million views on YouTube. I done my research. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> how much has your life changed, like, since, since that song came out? Because obviously, sure. obviously you are you are you are kind of popular. Mm -hmm, you obviously mm -hmm, made um, mm -hmm. the song with Ricky Rick. Um, Kal, uh, my, sure. my my close signs really pronunciation is not that great. No sweet. Kalaka, mm, Kalagata. Mm, Kalagata. Yes, sir. Um, but um, obviously now it's a new level. So how has your life changed since then? I I can't even explain it, bro. Like it's a brand new me. Mm -hmm. Um, don't get me wrong. Like obviously, like my foundation is really like big in SA. Yeah. Um, so we can pretty much go anywhere in South Africa and perform and people know the records. But Big Flexer really just took the brand to a whole new level. Like, literally in countries I never thought, You'd you be. know, I'd be, play, some places I actually have never heard of before, you uh -huh. know. You know, we're going there and people are singing word for word. Um, and obviously by that happening, 
you kind of get to a point where you kind of feel like you're being appreciated more outside than you are back at home. But um, it's it's like a how can I say it's like a fifty fifty situation, you know? Uh-huh. Like but, you know you loved at home, but when you go outside, you take it more serious. You're treated better. Like you the, get more love, yeah. The the works, you know. So it's kind of a an interesting time for us, you know, in terms of how we're trying to navigate the space and trying to push forward. Um, just trying to figure out, you know, the best way to take it forward because at the same time, we need to feed the fan base here at home, but at the same time, we need to grow the brand Overseas, internationally. Yeah. Yeah. internationally yeah. Mm. So, um, what's um, one country that you never heard of that you went to? Uh, Oman in the Middle East. Uh-huh. And they, they listen to God's teach out there? Yeah, bro. They're men over there singing, <laughs> doing yeah, that. Bro, dance and thing. Amazing, bro. Um, the other one was, um, it's a country in Europe called Estonia. Estonia, yeah. Yeah, I went there twice this uh, this year, and that was like my like first time ever hearing of it. Um, and just going there. You don't play there, FIFA, yeah. Like on FIFA, when you play, like, like not me, that often. Me no. playing FIFA, like you see yeah. all the countries on there, and you just see sure. like random countries. So you like okay, sort of yeah, like feel FIFA, you, feel you know it. what I mean? Nah, I'm not. I'm not too big on gaming. I just do it like socially there uh, and there for yeah. past time. Yeah, but I can give you a tough time on FIFA. FIFA, yeah, I can. you think so, yeah. guys? If you guys want to see me <laughs> beat Kostetic on FIFA, comment down below. <laughs> But next thing, obviously in um, the music industry, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people um, think a lot of things when a music when a musician reaches a new level. Sure. So I want to ask you today about Illuminati, bro. <laughs> we want to know. We want to know. Are you a part? Are you a part of the Illuminati? Because you know, you know, there's that one guy in the cast saying, "Nah, how did he just get one song and the song blew?" Mm. And eyes overseas making yeah. millions. He had to sell some. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean honestly, I mean from my side, I don't know nothing about no Illuminati. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ain't nobody hit me up yet, uh-huh. bro. Um, I don't want to go too much on the past, sure. Because obviously, I feel like you reach a new level right now, sure. Um, you worked with Diamond Platinum, bro. Yes, sir. How did that come about, bro? That's it's my brother, 4. man. Four point seven million now on um on YouTube. Yes, sir. Um. So actually, shout out to Mboso. Mboso is the artist that signed to Diamond Platinum's label. Mm-hmm. Um, he reached out to do a feature with me uh, while we were on our East African tour. And then the night that I was meant to link, well, the night that I was linking up with him to do the verse at yeah. the studio, he told me to come to uh, Diamond's house. Um, so I went there to go lace the verse. Obviously, I met Diamond. Uh, and then Diamond Platinum was like, yo, bro, um, he has, he's finishing up his EP and he had a record that he wanted me on. So... We laced that record same night, yeah, and that just formed a beautiful relationship. Um, and we've just been in touch over, like, ever since then. Mm-hmm. Um, major, major respect and huge shout out to Wasafi, bro, because like, you know, the guys over there, they really inspired me, bro. Because I've never seen an artist that's so, so big, like, at the height of what Diamond Platinum is at, even at the height of what, where Mboso is at, and still they so still, tough. bro, they're still grinding, bro. Uh, like they push they push they push their music bro like full rollout full push and at the same time they're so humble about it bro Mm -hmm. you know and and just amazing people like generally i've had a few times where i meet like certain artists that are big and i'm like i don't like their energy Mm -hmm. they've they've got a huge ego they kind of like it just kind of turns me off to be like yo man like i actually really really liked your song but now that i've met you face to face i'm just like yeah, 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 yeah. that's actually the opposite <sighs> when i met you though because i thought like mm-hmm. when i when i met you that day i was guest i'm not gonna lie i was like oh my <laughs> god because the watched my video sure. i you me my girl i was like yo i met because and sure. i sent you the video and i was just like yo you watch my video and um i was guest and i, I think Appreciate personally it, you're very very humble thank you bro. and you interact especially when i went to um costa teacher's yacht Oh yeah, <laughs> that was your that party. Was nice. Your yeah. party, bro. Was outside, nice. bro. People were missing me, like, "Oh, you moved up in life." But <laughs> they were thinking as my thing. Do you know what I mean? People were saying, "Oh, yo, you on your parties? Asking yeah. if they can borrow me money because of you." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, one thing I wanted to ask you is mm-hmm. um, Cape Town and Johannesburg. Sure. I feel like currently there's um, a gap. Sure. And like we spoke before, um, before the camera about um, Cotton Fest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Cotton Fest lineups in um, Johannesburg sure. compared to the Cotton Fest um, lineups in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. People are more gassed for the Joburg lineups because sure. of the Joburg artists. Yeah. So I want to ask you, what do you think we, you guys do? Different, you, I mean, you're not, you're from Pumalanga, obviously, to, to be but on, you are part of the Joburg scene now. I don't think it's anything about doing anything different, bro. I think it's just the mere fact that all the artists stay in Joburg. You know, it's like, it's the entertainment hub. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, 
you could literally gig everywhere in Johannesburg for like six months, bro, and not repeat a venue. Because there's so many different areas and so many different places, places where things go. are going on. So it's really just a place where there's so many people that are in the entertainment industry stay there. And because of that, Cotton Fest can host a festival and know that everyone is leaving their house to come perform and yeah, going back home. They know they wanna, they wanna, you know, yeah. Cape Town, it's a flight, bro. It's a mm-hmm. two hour flight. Um, as much as like, yo, the partying, the partying scene here is like through the roof. You think it's madder um, than Joburg? I have a great time when I'm here, more than I do in Joburg. I feel ah. like I feel like Joburg is too fake. Like Joburg is very industry based. It's very um, people are like, how can I say it? You know, if someone asks you how are you, but they actually don't care. Yeah, like that kind of vibe. Like it's very that kind of vibe. Um, and it's just like, how can I put it, bro? You can literally like wake up on a Friday in Johannesburg and open your phone and pick any of the biggest stars that you like like and follow mm-hmm. and you'll be able to find them at one of the venues oh, so you can this weekend. Yeah, I get what you mean. You understand what I mean? And I get, I guess that translates throughout to the people as well because now the people also like, if someone goes to Sumo, for example, right? I went to Sumo once, guys. That was the only club I ever been to in Joburg. Now you see, now there's people that are there every single week. So can you imagine how many stars they'll see on a weekly basis? Weekly basis yeah, yeah. Have you seen the, the lineup that Rockets has? I don't in Johannesburg. Okay, so if you if you check out Rockets, like their lineup is sometimes like a festival lineup. And that's how it's like a bar restaurant type vibe. Uh-huh. Like But <laughs> but know? how do they how do they maintain that though? Because obviously these stars have um crazy budgets. I mean mm-hmm, mm-hmm. crazy um prices and it costs a lot more to get this also. How do they how do they maintain it? Do you feel like people will constantly keep coming to the club? I think it's relationship based, bro. Um the truth of the matter is, man, I think a lot of people are still riding on the I don't think they're using COVID as an excuse, mm-hmm. but I think I think a lot of the promoters had COVID allow them to get artists at discounted rates, and because they built that relationship throughout that time, they are sticking with they're it sticking now. With it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of hard now to change. Like, you know, you'd be like, "Yo, like the fees increased. This is this, and this and this," and then people like they still don't kind of value the same mm-hmm. um, because they don't want to kind of they don't want to accept it. But Johannesburg generally. If you look at like normal booking contracts for artists, like because it's within a certain radius of where the artist stays, the ch- the, the the price is lower. Yeah, because they don't have to fly yeah, anywhere. Yeah, it's not like out of town. It's not considered there, yeah. an out of town booking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, how much do you guys? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, by the time this airs, it might even change, bro. Uh, so obviously, you know <laughs> it's, constantly, it's constantly it's constantly a changing figure. Um, and we charge differently internationally than we do locally. Um, Obviously, because you're leaving the country, of course. A hundred percent. Yeah, man. Uh, but the dollars are lit. It's uh, nice. The dollars is nice, no? <laughs> it's nice. Dollars yeah. nice. But ever since you've been overseas, is there anyone that you've been so excited that you mm-hmm. met any particular artist? Yeah, a hundred percent, bro. Uh, when I was in the UK, I met uh, Ed Sheeran. Jeez! Uh, that I'll was cry. dope. That was dope. But it was generally like, I always think the smoking section is the plug, bro. Oh, you know, like if you ever go to a dope event or whatever, and like, you know, there's like, it's like a networking event where you know a lot of like artists, whatever, whatever. Yeah, and you smoke, go to the smoking section, you're most likely going to bump into somebody there and I was, a conversation um, will start. I was meeting yeah. a and Did you speak to him? Not even, bro. At first, it felt awkward because the event was still empty. Yeah. And it kind of felt like, every, obviously, okay, it's not, kind of felt like obviously everyone's attention was on him because yeah, he's, he's there the biggest, you yeah, understand yeah. and it just felt like i didn't want to be like that guy that makes things awkward like mm, now i'm right. coming to you having that pitch what the plus at the same time the event that was happening was in was a tribute to one of his like all-time friends that had passed away um, right? so, so was it Ed Sheeran's event or no like it was it was an event by the company of the guy that passed away oh i see i see so right? it wasn't the right but, space yeah, so like it's like I'm hearing that is the information of the type of event that we're going to. As much as it's still a party, that's the whole point of that party, yeah. right? But you know, I just didn't want to go there now. Like now, I'm having this chat. Plus, he had a lot of people around him and all that stuff. Um, but then, more than anything, um, Spooder Rock, my brand manager, mm-hmm. like a true brand manager, yeah. was like, "Yo, 
come on, we got to get a photo at least. Oh, so you, you got know? the photo at least. Yeah, at least got a young photo with him and, and that was dope. I think it'll be a dope story to tell one day, like, you know, when we do cross paths on like a working type level to be like, yo, I actually took a photo with you. At, yeah, at back, event, back you in know? the day, yeah. yeah. And um, on international artists, Akon. Yes, sir. Akon obviously said, <laughs> you is nigger. <laughs> and um, he really likes your music. How do you feel about that? Because I saw it was straight on the Instagram. Bro, uh, I don't even know how to explain that, man. It's, it's, it's such a crazy moment, bro. Like, imagine it's like, like, just put yourself in my shoes, bro. Yeah. Someone that you grow up listening to. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah, like, internationally. And it's like, you know, we often see these stars as like people that you could never like, ever Touch. like, you know, yeah, you know, they even, seem so far away. And mm-hmm. like, for him to go on a whole podcast and say that and give me the shout out and the credit. And like, I watched the full thing and literally in that space, like he only mentioned Drake, myself and Kid Leroy and the people that he was looking, looking like, you know, and that just really meant so much to me, bro, because it's like more than anything, that's just a sign to keep going and, and a sign that like, you know, great things are to come, bro. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you, did you reach out to him afterwards? Yeah, we've talked in the in the DM, bro. Jeez. Yeah. Bro got Aiko in the DM. It's crazy, In the collab on the way. <laughs> uh, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, wow, we'll see that, if it happens. That right. tells you that tells you <laughs> that something's cooking, bro. But uh, speaking on um collabs as well, um, what is your dream collab? Obviously Aikon is probably mm-hmm. one of them, but apart from that, any dream, dream collab. Someone so, that you listen to every day. I've got so many, bro. Um someone that really inspires me sonically is Travis uh Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Every time I listen to his bodies of work, like I'm just blown away by like the overall like how can I say experience of the music. Yeah, yeah. you know. So someone like him, obviously Drake. Uh, of course. A lot of these guys, like a lot of the biggest artists in the world. The reason I actually want to work with them, as much as I'm a, like a fan of the music, is also really just to see how they make music. Mm. You know, just to be able to experience that and see what what's really happening behind the scenes, because obviously we're always on the receiving end. Yeah, we always. Got you it. know, we don't see like how the studio sessions are. Like, you know, are, is it just fun vibes? Are they thinking about it too much? Are they having the fifty people that we say are contributing to the record, or like we yeah, hear about yeah. like the Beyonce the writing music. team? Yeah. You know. Um. So yeah, man. Like more than anything, it's really just. Like, I would love to experience what it takes to work with, work with them, like with the them. actual work. Okay, yeah. perfect. Bro, you obviously speak about um, artists making music. Mm-hmm. So how's your day-to-day life when you're not touring? Because obviously you must be international now all over the sure, world. Sure, sure. So how, how do you, how's your process and how's, mm-hmm. just how's, your, how's your day when you make music on a day but still live your normal life? I mean, it's, it's hard to say, bro, because when I'm in and out of the tours, it's literally like... So I was in this crazy cycle this year where it actually started to affect like my mental health a bit yeah. because it was literally a thing of would fly back from wherever we're coming from on the Monday, mm-hmm. which would mean I would only get home like maybe late Monday or sometimes even Tuesday morning. And then I'd have to, when, I'm get, when I get home, I'd basically have to offload clothes, offload, take to laundry run all the errands yeah. I have. I have all the Don't you have someone doing that business, for you? Cost business t- to attend to. <laughs> Bro, I, at the end of the day, like, I'm coming back with the clothes. I have to... Yeah, you, have, on, to, you, you, have, to, yeah, you have to take it regardless. Sometimes, if I don't have the time, yeah, obviously, yeah, I'd have, like, somebody drop it off for me, you know? But more than anything, it's just get back on the Tuesday, sort out my life, get my life in order. Yeah. Wednesday, attend to whatever is the most... Uh, important thing I have time to attend to back home so like if it be so and so needed to get into studio if it be I need to have a meeting with this client or that client or whatever do whatever I need like whatever's most important for that week do yeah, it on do the it, Wednesday yeah. and then Thursday I leave again Whew, so you, you know just like all over the world bro so that was the cycle that literally was happening for like months on months this year um, and it got a bit taxing and then nicely, I think it was like last month, yeah, this month actually, this past month. November. Um, yeah, November. I had a nice two weeks like of clean, like, yeah, I had a few gigs there and there, but uh, we had a, a tour that got postponed because the visas were taking too long. Mm-hmm. 
And that just allowed us to, what allowed me to really just get back on track, get back in the gym, get back to eating healthy. That's other stuff that people don't understand, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You have no control over the kind of food that you're going to bump into wherever mm-hmm. you're going. And sometimes it's not the one, bro. It's not the one. Yeah, you it's know? unhealthy as well, yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'm pescatarian, myself and Shampuru Makenzo, my, what a, my what DJ. A, Meaning we basically vegetarian, but we eat fish. Ah, right? so you don't like meat? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Don't you miss mm. it sometimes? Chicken. Chicken. Yeah. You miss chicken? I miss chicken. Jeez. I could never <laughs> live without chicken. Lie. I could never live I'm without chicken. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I miss chicken sometimes. No, sometimes. Sometimes. But the thing is, okay, so it has a fun fact about me. Every time I'm about to drop a big project, right? Yes, sir. I always sacrifice something in my life. So before I drop my album Made in Africa, I said for 21 days, I'm going to cut out meat. Mm-hmm. Right, this is something I'm eating every day. I'm just gonna cut out meat. And I'm gonna push this for 21 days until the project drops. So it's well, it's a kind of like a fast, and, yeah. And I really just like to do it with things that are kind of like something that's in my day to day. Like my last project, I did um, I did water, so I drank only water for 21 days. Like Whew. I didn't touch any other liquids or anything, and I've actually kept it going now. I'm about to hit like day 38, somewhere around there, uh-huh. right? But basically. I did that for 21 days and then like I realized my energy levels were changing. You got a lot more energy as well. Mm, I wasn't getting the itis anymore. I wasn't feeling tired after like eating. Um, I wasn't feeling as bloated anymore after eating. And then also because um, I have to give major shout out to Shamburu for this because basically he, he's been pescatarian for I think like over 10 years. Jeez. So that 21 days was easy for me because I'm like, yo, I'm just going to copy everything you eat. He does like that. Like everywhere yeah. we go, whatever you're eating, I'm eating. The you same know? thing, yeah. And I found it so easy and I found it like, yo, I found like I unlocked the new world when it comes to food in the terms of like just eating more interesting meals. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, let me just stick with it. Yeah, that's crazy because you think like once you get all this money and once you get all this fame, you mm-hmm. think you I can eat everything. Sure. But I feel like that sort of discipline um, allows you to sort of have a lot of control of things in your life. Because sure. I feel like maybe maybe that sort of makes you feel like that's the one thing you can control because your life is so hectic. You're flying around the world. You mm-hmm, have to be. You have mm-hmm, to be there. Mm-hmm. So your food is probably something that you can control. Not even. Not even. Not even. I would. I don't want to mention the country I was in because, like, I feel like they'll feel like I'm disrespecting their food. But there's a place where I ate fries for three days. Just fries. Literally, for three days straight. I can. I, 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 I can probably think yes, but I'm not going to mention that. I literally only ate fries and I was just like, okay, like I have to give them credit because at the end of the day, like it was the hotel that was making bad food. Yeah, not that. We not found a restaurant after three days, we found a restaurant and that restaurant's food was banging and it was like, <laughs> that was the only place we ate at until we left, you yeah. know. Um, but that's the kind of situations you encounter. Like you get to a place, you it's your first time there. You don't know anyone. You can't exactly just leave the hotel to go anywhere. Um, sometimes the promoters, like they literally leave you at the hotel and be like, we'll see you when we need you. Like we're not going to, like some promoters are like that. Like uh-huh. really, some promoters are also awesome in the sense that they'll give you a whole itinerary. They'll come show you the, the city, show you their country, like take you to interesting places. But like some, some places like, bro, we literally like, you get like some claustrophobia of, like from being in a hotel, hotel room, room for too but much. But do they you know? restrict you from leaving completely? No, it's just that... You don't know where you're going. You don't know where you're going. Maybe, you know, you're in a place where, you know, people don't really speak English that much. So you can't it's hard to help. communicate. Yeah. Um, and then also some places, man, it's just like... Some places are actually quite hectic, bro. Like, like we big, bro. Like, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. just so go anywhere. You like, can't just go anywhere and people you know? will see you, yeah. Um, so, yeah... But the food situation, when like drawing it back to the food, like sometimes it's amazing food, sometimes it's really bad, it's um, and it's really hard to kind of like get yourself into that like healthy eating like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cycle because it can get broken at any time. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, bro. Um, look, we've been very, very, very blessed. We've made, we have made a lot of money. Yeah. But the other side of it is we're independent. Mm-hmm. So I can tell you right now that. Maybe ninety five percent of what we have made went directly back into reinvesting into the business. Mm, crazy, um, crazy. I'm not gonna sit here on this thing and have viewers at home thinking, "Oh, this guy's rich." Mm-hmm. Yo, we make a lot of money, but we put a lot of money back into the business, and and that's something that I'll continue to do 
for as long as I see fit, just based on the fact that we still have control of our brand. Mm -hmm. Nobody's mm -hmm. telling us what to do. Every product that we put out is us and our team feeling like this is what we want to share with the world, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it's just a blessing to move that way, man. Uh, when it comes to the whole thing of owning your master and stuff like that, I feel like in the beginning, when you're on the come up as an artist, you don't kind of see the reason for it. You'll be like, ah, I'm broke, so let me just sign, Sell it and, get the money sign and then uh, I'll blow up and then I'll see after. But then you only start to realize when you're actually in the space that how beneficial it is for you as an artist to own that master because there's so many things that will happen and play out, sync deals, your streaming, your the works, bro. And you start to realize that, oh, this is where the benefits come in. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, man, but yeah, just back to the money chats. Yeah, like at the end of the day, and it's been like that for a few years now, like ever since we got in, I never used to feel like we making money until I started getting like, you know, financial reports or, you know, checking out like the like statements for like over the whole year. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, whoa, we actually received so much, but it never felt that way. Yeah, yeah. Cause you know, um, because we always putting it in, bro. Like, and now the pressure is like, is getting more like higher because like at the end of the day, the music video quality like needs to increase. Needs to increase, yeah. Cause yeah. And productions aren't coming in cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I used to shoot music videos, so... I kind of like, that's one thing that I like always used to try and finesse is like the fact that I knew how directors and stuff were like overcharging. Yeah. So, so like, now nah, let me take it into my own hands. But now it's at a point where it's like, we're so busy that I, I don't have the time to take a whole production into my own mm -hmm, hands. Like, mm -hmm. so I have no choice but to pay. Like, let's just pay. And I know that that person's responsible for everything. You know, we get to set, we do our video shoots. I'll go to the editing session and... Just, and, just obviously you oversee. Know, oversee that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the last thing, I want to ask you, do you see yourself um, ever signing with a um, big record label? 100%. 100% do. It's just a matter of timing and who it is and what they offer because I'm not trying to sign. I'm actually trying to partner. Mm. I really want somebody that we can partner with. It must feel like they're part of my team. I don't want to feel mm -hmm. like I'm working for them for or someone, they're working yeah. for me. You know, it feels like we need to have that. The same synergy I have within my team right now is what I just want an extension of. But it has to be internationally. Of course. Of when course, it comes to uh, the South African space, we already know how to operate it. You know, we already know how to, you know, make sure that all the working mechanics, like everything is working, basically. Yeah. And when it pertains to the international space, you don't just like right now. That's the thing. The only thing that I'm struggling with right now, being independent, is you don't drop a song and automatically it's poof, poof it's everywhere. Uh, you have to do it yourself. You, you have to make have to, sure that. Be good. Yeah. Yeah. Not even that. It has to be just has to be good. I mean, the music like always needs to be good, but like marketed properly. The fact that like there's a radio station somewhere in Tanzania that's gonna play it tomorrow. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that. Like you need to have that communication yeah. and with the record labels especially the major ones they have their branches in all the different areas of the world so when they drop it's one email and all of a sudden everyone, everyone is just spreading it, it. that's how yeah. you're going to hear drake like in some random corner that that he probably doesn't even, even know, know he's about, playing yeah. in you know um and that's the reason why we want to want to partner with someone on a on a global scale mm -hmm. just to take it to like that kind of level yeah that's crazy but guys this has been the Kid Show. Shout out to Kostic every single time. My yes. first um, artist on here. Awesome, and hopefully bro. more of the artists will come through and um, come feature, bro. Yes, so sir. guys, a shout out to you, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate it, you. Good luck on the tour. Thank I know you. you're not going to be home for Christmas, but um, yeah, it's going to be yeah, a movie man. regardless. Yes, sir. Shout out.